In everybody's life, there is a defining moment in where you realize who your true friends are. There will be a situation that manipulates your friends into either leaving you or sticking by your side. I have been through that stage in my life already where I need to rely on my family. And my family is really the only people who I can rely on because, as some of you may know, friends come and go. I have also been through that stage in my life where I wanted nothing to do with my family. And I'm sure all of you have experienced this. You go to school, you come home, go into your room, play music, text, socialize, think about boys, girls. Then you go up maybe for dinner, have a quick dinner with your family, and go back into your cave. And don't come out for a while, because you don't want anything to do with them. Not now. Your friends are really important. So are your relationships, and family can wait. So it's normal at this age to disagree with your parents. Um, we are all at this age where we are learning who we are and creating our own opinions about things and discovering new ways that we feel and learning an unexplicable amount of things that you just have to develop an opinion about. So let's be honest, our parents are from another time and being from another time, you might as well be from another planet because we have come a long way from floppy disks and pay phones and Walkmans, bell bottoms, afros, the whole thing. Yeah, not anymore. So I've had two defining moments in my life where um, I have realized who my friends are. The first um, defining moment in my life was sophomore year in high school. I was diagnosed with Ewing's sarcoma, which is a bone cancer, and it was really hard to go through all the physical aspects of chemotherapy, but it was even harder going through it with not all the friends that I thought I had by my side. Sometimes people just fill the space around you instead of actually being there with you. This happened to me, but luckily I had very special friends who stayed with me the whole way through. So after this first experience, um, I was healing up and recovering and um, making more relationships and meeting new friends and living my life again. And I had made this one very special friend who I got very close to. We did everything together. We were attached by the hip, and the high school knew that we were best friends. Everybody knew we were best friends. Anywhere you go, you see her or me together. Also, this person, I saw myself growing up with her. I saw myself moving to the same town when we were older, um, having kids at the same time so they'll grow up and be best friends, um, going to holiday vacations and dinners and just spending the rest of our life and growing old together. This friend of mine, she was there for me for a short amount of time. Before my second defining moment, um, which is when I was diagnosed with leukemia, the night before, I had gone to her house and um, we spent the night together and um, laid in her bed and talked and laughed and cried and, you know, all those girly things. Talked about boys. I keep bringing that up. Boys, yes, boys. Um, anyways, she made me a bunch of promises. She promised me that no matter what was going on and what was going to happen in the future, she was going to be by my side. She was going to hold my hand and she was going to walk me through every step of the way. And I felt so confident that no matter what happened, I could go through this another round of chemo. I could go through surgeries, bone marrow transplants, everything, because I had this friend by my side. Unfortunately, about a week after I was diagnosed, um, 
she slowly started to disappear out of my life. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know. It's a very personal thing to go through, but one day to the other, she was gone. And I was thinking, you know, what happened to all those promises? What happened to holding my hand the whole way through? And in this time, I realized, this is the time where I realized that friends go. They come and they go, and they walk in the door, and they walk out the door. So I looked to the people who were there for me the whole time around, and that was my family. My family has been there for everything, like I said before. It's consistent. They are a constant in my life. They are always there. So one night, while I was sitting with my family, my younger sister turned to me and said, I'm so happy we went through all of this. I was like, what? Do you know what just came out of your mouth? Are you being serious right now? Do you know what I've been through? And then she proceeded to say, before all of this, we didn't know you, and you hated us. At first, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, yeah, no. But then I reflected for a second, and it's true. I, had, I didn't want anything to do with my sisters, or my family, or my parents, or my grandparents. I was in my own little world, and I shut out this great part of my life that I could have spent so much more time with in their love and in their embrace and in their arms. And, and so those words still haunt me to this day because all along, the friends that I have been looking for in other people have been right there. They have been right in front of me and they are right in front of you guys too. You may be going through difficult things that you don't feel like you can share with anybody, but your family, they have your back. So I may no longer have Ewing sarcoma, I may no longer have leukemia, and I may no longer have some of those friends, but family. Family is that one constant in my life that I will always have, and I hope you guys realize that. Thank you.